Hi, this is just going to be a short introduction to games development using Microsoft's Touch Develop and Spriter from Brash Monkey. Hi, I'm David Drenton. I'm Curriculum and Quality Leader for Computing at West College Scotland in Paisley. I like sharing games development and have done so for about the past 10 years using things like Touch Develop and XNA and now Monogame. I um, also teach 2D animation, 3D animation and various other subjects. Um, I've also been a Microsoft MVP for the past three years for Connect and now for Emerging Experiences, which includes the likes of HoloLens. Um, and I've also been an MIE for a number of years. I think currently I'm, I'm MIE Fellow. Um, my Twitter handle and blog are there as well if you'd like to get in touch. Touch Develop is a great free tool from Microsoft um, that can be used for app development or games development. Um, it's cloud based and web based um, which is part of the reason I use it as well. It allows you to create apps and on any device that has a modern web browser that's HTML5 compatible. This includes i10, i11, Edge, Chrome, Safari and many more. Um, and because of that it basically can run on pretty much any device and that include desktop PCs running Windows, Mac, Linux but it also will run on tablets and smartphones, from Windows phones to iPhones to Android phones and iPads, Surface tablets, and things like that. So it runs across pretty much any device. Um, it has been designed to run with touch, so you can use it purely on a touchscreen device, but it also now works pretty well with keyboard as well. Um, mostly in my classroom, we do it on Windows, P Windows 10 PCs using keyboard and mouse. Um, but then when they actually want to try it out and use it, things like the touch uh, controls and things like that, they run it on their smartphones to see it actually going. So it's great that way. The other thing, because it's cloud-based, is when they log into it, they sign in with an account, say an Office 365 or a Microsoft account, um, and then whatever they do on against that account is synced across all the devices. So they don't need to uh, go in and upload it or anything to get it onto their phone or whatever. It just appears pretty much instantly on those devices. Because Touch Develop runs um, on any kind of device, including mobile devices such as tablets and phones, you can access all the different kind of features that you have in them. One of the main ones being obviously the touchscreen, so you can easily make a game that uses touchscreen controls, either with buttons or by touching on various parts of the screen. Maybe you touch on the screen and the character moves towards where you've touched. You can simulate this using a, a click of the mouse, left mouse button, when you're doing it on a PC. Um, but you don't need to do anything special after that to make it work on the touchscreen. It also can use your camera, front and back, if you have that, on your uh, laptop or mobile phone. You could even take a picture and then use that in your application. Um, you can access pictures and uh, sounds that have been captured on your device as well. As well as that you can access the accelerometer and gyroscope data which basically means you can make apps that can be controlled by using the likes of Tilt. So you can make a game for instance where you've got a ball that when you tilt your tablet the ball rolls across in the direction that you're tilting. Um, and you can also access other things from the phone, such as, and not just just not just limited to these things, but the geolocation stuff, like compasses and maps. Um, so you could easily create an app where you tell them where the nearest train station is to where they currently are, things like that. So it's it, it's, it gives you easy access to these things, um, which aren't so easy to be honest to do in other languages. Spriter from Brash Monkey is a great 2D animation package um, that's got a free edition uh, that you can use to create simple 2D animated sprites for use in games um, in the likes of Touch Develop, Mono Game, X and A, in fact pretty much any games development package out there you can use these in because you can create what's called a sprite sheet or a sprite strip that can be imported and used in most of these programs. Um, it has a free edition, as I mentioned, which for the purpose of this tutorial was absolutely fine. Um, most of the features of the Pro Edition are not are, are nice things that are extra that you don't necessarily need. Um, we mostly have used the free edition up to now and it's been fine, so um, I would suggest having a look at that. Um, it uses a modular method of creating animations where you basically construct uh, construct animations made up of body parts. It can be done very quickly. 
Um, it uses keyframes, so you just create the keyframes in your animation and Sprouter will tween and fill in the gaps. You can even use a skeletal animation technique similar to, done to the way you do things in 3D animation where you, you're, you're rigging a character. Um, this allows you to create more realistic humanoid characters where bones are connected so that when you move one bone, the other bone moves along with it. Um, so yeah, Sprite is a great powerful tool and we're going to use it to create a, a simple flappy bird for this tutorial. The objective of this lesson is to introduce students to games development using coding and animation. The lesson is designed so that very quickly students can create their own game using Touch Develop, then create their own animated game sprite and add it into their Touch Develop game. They're going to create the animation using Spriter, which is free, and they're going to code the game using Microsoft Touch Develop, which again is also free. The lesson should be able to be delivered comfortably within two hours, with roughly one hour in coding and one hour on animation. Um, and I find that for most students that's fine. I've used this with students as young as eight, all the way through to college students in their 30s, um, and it works with all ages. Um, the step-by-step -step tutorial is really good because nearly all students actually get it working. But the main point of this lesson is to get them within that two hour period having actually created their own game. Um, with their own animated game sprite that then can, they can then show to their friends and family running on their smartphone or their tablet um, and saying, look, this is what I've created. Um, they also will gain the experience of using the touch develop interface, hopefully some coding principles and some basic animation experience as well. The first part of the lesson is to get them to create their own Flappy Bird game using Touch Develop. So they're going to do some coding, but they're going to follow the Jumping Bird step-by-step -step tutorial, which is on the Touch Develop website. This takes roughly 20 minutes to one hour. Um, as I said before, I've used this with students as young as eight. The good thing about the step-by-step -step tutorials is they guide them through the process as it says step-by-step. -step. It also does give them background information on everything they're doing. I've found that students tend not to always read that. Um, if they really want to take in what they're doing, they should read it. Um, but the good thing about it is that nearly all students can follow this tutorial through. It will guide them as to the code they put in. It will tell them when they get it wrong and tell them what to correct. And they nearly all get through it and get the game created roughly within 20 to, 20 to 30 minutes for most students. Some will take longer. If you give them an hour, that's plenty of time. Usually an hour, to be honest, includes you giving a bit of demonstration of it. Um, so yeah, that's great. To begin the Touch Develop tutorial, they go to first of all www.touchdevelop.com and then they click or touch on the Launch Touch Develop button, which is down here. Once they've done that, they'll get to the next page and what they should do then is sign in, clicking or touching this button here. Uh, then they choose one of the different accounts that they can link to their Touch Develop account. So you've got Microsoft, which includes like the Hotmail accounts, Live accounts. You can use an Office 365 account, whether it's a paid for one or a school one. You can even use Facebook. You can use Google accounts, such as Gmail. You can use Yahoo and even GitHub. Um, I personally use Microsoft, but I said any of them will do fine. After that, on the right hand side of the page they should see this jumping bird tutorial here so if they click or touch on that it will come up with this page on the left here then they will click on follow tutorial and editor and that will begin the process next they're going to create their own flappy bird animation um, to do this, they can follow the, the tutorial from my uh, booklet, which they can download by clicking in here. Or you can download for them and print out. I'm happy for you to print it out. Um, but yeah, if you download that and go to pages 7 to 10, there's a simple uh, tutorial there that guides them through creating this bird here. There's also a video you can download by going to this link and going into the folder, and you'll find there's a video of me doing it in Spriter as well. Um, if you don't have Spriter, uh, if you click on this link here, you can download it from Brash Monkey. Um, as well as that, I provided the graphics that you can see in the example here on the right, which can be downloaded from here along with some other wings and body parts that they can use if they want to create something a little bit different. 
but basically you're going to use the, the wings and the legs and the head and the body and you're going to construct it a bit like I'm doing in this animation and then make it flap. Um, again, this can usually be done easily within half an hour once you get used to the package. Um, so you should easily get it done within an hour. A lot of them do it a lot quicker than that as well. Once they've created their game character, Flappy Bird and Spriter, which should be saved as a sprite sheet in a PNG format. Um, PNG because the background is transparent, which you need for game sprites. They're then going to go back into Touch Develop, into their game, and edit it. And then they're going to click on Script here. And then they're going to click on Add New, or Touch on Add New if they're using a tablet or a phone. Once they've done that, they're going to then select on Picture Resource. Once they've done Picture Resource, they're then going to click on Upload, and tap on Upload, or just touch on Upload. Finally, they're going to then um, go to Choose File, and it'll pop up with the file directory. Click on their PNG Sprite Sheet, and choose and select it. And then give it a name in here. Um, they can give it a description if they want, but they don't need to. You do not need to click on that because it will already have the background removed. And if you if you do do that, it may remove bits that you don't want removed. And finally, you're going to click on or touch publish, and that will get your graphic onto Touch Develop. It will actually mean that other users in Touch Develop can also access and use your sprite, which is a nice thing about Touch Develop because it's a community where you share things. The final bit of this lesson is to add your animated sprite into the game. Now you've already uploaded it, now you're going to have to edit the code. The students are going to have to edit the code to actually get it playing. This should only take about the last 10-15 minutes of the lesson at most. On the left hand side here you'll see um, an, a screenshot from a game that was created using the tutorial where they haven't added an animation and you'll notice that they have a line here where it says var sprite game create sprite cow game. Now cow game in this example is a picture of a cow. The kid that did that game created flappy cow. We're going to change that part. All the other lines of code that they create are just added in. So when they come to add in the code, you can see on the right, these three lines here, that I'm highlighting here in blue, these three lines get added in above the var sprite line. So they should, they should go into their touch to game, select that var sprite line, and then hit the plus above it to add in a new line, and add in three new lines, and just make it match this. While we're doing that, if you saved your animation as a sprite sheet which was 4x5, you'll keep it to 4x5 here, okay, and you'll keep this as 20, which is the number of frames to play. If, however, you changed it to say 5x5 five five or 5x6, five you would change it here to your numbers, which would be say 5x5, five five, and then this would be, if it was 5x5, five five, it would be 25, because it's the number of frames, which is basically this, multi 4 multiplied by 5, or in the case of 25 frames, 5x5, five five, 5 times 5. The other numbers which you may want to fiddle with as well are the 0 0.25. The 0 0.25 is how often each loop of the animation plays. If you change that to say 0 0.5, it will play your animation back slower. If you made it 0 0.15 or 0 0.1, it will play the animation quicker. Um, and the other one which you should leave alone, but you should probably know what it does, is this. The minus 1. And the minus 1 it actually is the number of times that the animation should play. If you set it to 5, it would play 5 times and then stop. The minus 1 just indicates that it's going to loop continuously until the game is done. Um, the line that you, so you add in those three lines is brand new lines above this var sprite line. The one line that you change is the var sprite line. So when you're doing the var sprite line, what I want you to do is actually take this bit here that I'm highlighting on the left here, that I'm circling here. The game creates sprite cow game bit. You would delete out, leaving only the var sprite part left and the equal symbol. And then you're going to add in game car character create sprite, which I've badly highlighted there. I'll just do that again. So you're going to add in just this bit here. Okay. Um, and that is how you do that one line. 
Then you add in three more lines, which is sprite set height. Now that's just to set your animation so that it's not too big to be honest. You can fiddle with the 45. Um, when you change the height of a sprite in touch develop, it also changes the width. So there's no point setting the height and the width. So you can set either the height or width and it will resize it the other, the other direction as well. So fiddle a bit with that till you're happy with the size of it when it plays. And lastly to tell it to actually play the animation, you do these two lines, which is to create an animation and to play it. Once they've done that, if they play their game, it should work like it did previously, but it should have an animated bird anim in the game. And that's them done. And you should find, hopefully, at the end of that, they're quite motivated by that process. The very final process of creating the game is to play it. Um, Touch Develop has a built-in high scored function that you can use, which the the game, the Flappy Bird clone, makes use of. So they can try and beat their best score. Um, they can play it on their phone or their tablet or their PC. They can share it on Facebook with their friends and family. Um, and they can get people playing it, which really really helps the, the, get them excited and motivated. The fact that they can say, look, this is the game I made. Try it. See if you can beat my score. Um, you can see in the picture on the left that I recently um, did this workshop at Dbox in London and we had kids on a Saturday morning as young as 7 or 8 making this game and they all managed it. Um, I also did it at Games Botanica recently at Sheffield Hallam University with high school kids who also made it and they also created the animated bird as well and they made various incarnations of the animated bird. So yeah it really works well, it's a great introduction to games development and I've had some really good feedback from teachers um, and the fact that they can do this in two hours and actually get something actually creating and working that they've made. So yeah, try it out and enjoy and hopefully get kids um, motivated in programming and coding and making games.